Well, my brother Damien is 18 months older than I am. And when we were growing up, probably like some of your brothers, he loved to terrorise me. One time when I was eight, he put me in a trunk and slid me down a steep slope of stairs because he wanted to see if I'd live. <laughs> I did, thank goodness. And another time we were playing cowboys and Indians and he tied me up by the hands and by the ankles and he gagged me and he threw me in a closet and he closed the door and then he forgot all about me. And even as an adult, he loves to mess with my mind. But he was a little perturbed in 2007 when I got a new job. And I know he was thinking, would this affect him in any way at all? And if so, how? The new job that I got I, was that I became the new Protestant chaplain at the largest men's prison in Maryland. <laughs> I'd volunteered there for two and a half years, and so I'd got to know the men. Well, I got the job, but to keep the job, I had to train to be a correctional officer. Even though officers are so different from chaplains, the jobs are completely different. But if I didn't get through the academy, I would be out in the cold. I would lose the job. So I went to the academy by day, and in the evening I came back to the prison to do services with the men. Well, the correctional academy is in two parts. There's an academic side, and then there's a practical side. Well, I didn't have a problem with the academic side. I aced that. It was just the practical side that I had such difficulty with. Well, among the other things that you had to do, you had to be able to pat a man down, shackle him, and take him to the ground. Now, I never had a problem with the patting a man down. <laughs> I've had lots of practice of that in my misspent youth. It was just the shackling and the taking them down that I really had a problem with. Now, what the shackling meant was that you had to be able to put on full restraint. That's handcuffs, waist chains, and leg irons, and you had to be able to do it in under a minute. Well, we had the exam the next day, and the whole class was practicing. Well, the young correctional officers, they were all A-types, and they were loving this. They were throwing those irons on each other with hoops and hollers. They were having a marvelous time. And I was paired with a, a lovely young woman called Jessica, who was an addiction specialist. And she was very patient. And she needed to be. Because I was terrible with the hardware. But we practiced all afternoon, and finally, in the end, we were throwing handcuffs on each other. Until I came to my senses. And I said, Jessica, I'm going to have to be careful. You see, I was conducting my first wedding that night. Nothing to do with the the prison, and I looked down at my wrist and I had handcuff marks. <laughs> and I, I was going to lift up my hand in blessing. And it was not a biker service. <laughs> well, the next day, I just squeaked through the exam. I did it on the second attempt. In fact, I did it in one minute and one second. But the lieutenant very graciously let me have it because we both knew a chaplain is never going to have to shackle an inmate. But I still had to get through the taking the men down, and I was seriously awful at this. Now, it didn't help that I was partnered with a huge man. He was older, and this was his second career. He'd been a trucker. And he had a very bad case of wandering hands. <laughs> and he used this exercise to indulge himself on me. Well, between not knowing what I was doing and the groping, I was in a dreadful state. And of course, at night, I was going back and doing services with the men. But I was very careful not to say anything about the academy to them and to be very careful what I shared about my personal life. In that kind of job, you've got to keep real, real uh, defenses up. You've got to be really careful what you share. But I was sitting in my office, and I had three men in there. One of them said, well, he said, Chaplain, how's the academy going? And I said, it's going fine. And then I'm afraid I lied. I said, at the moment, I'm learning how to take men down, and I am very good at it. But I need a bit more practice. Now, one man was standing in my doorway, and he was huge. He was filling the whole frame. It looked as though he'd worked out for every day of the last five years that he'd been incarcerated. And I said, Robert, I'm going to practice on you. I'm going to come from behind this desk, and I'm going to come, and I'm going to take you down. And he went, ho, 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 chaplain. But I did notice, I did notice he kept his eye on me as he backed out of the room very slowly, just in case. 
Well, the young correctional officers, they took pity on me. They saw I really was trying my best, but I was so uncoordinated at this. And so one of them, a kind man called Rutherford, came up to me and he said, Chaplin, he said, would you, would you let me help you? I teach mentally handicapped children self-defense. <laughs> I know I can teach you. <laughs> and he could and he did. Well, we got to the last night before taking the last exam the next day. And I had to go to the small release centre, which is next to the big prison. I was conducting a prayer meeting there, and there was about 10 men in the room. And they all shared what they needed praying for, and we all prayed. And then the inmate leader of that group said, Chaplain, he said, I, I, I've got a feeling that, that we need to pray for you. It looks as though there's something that's heavy on your heart. Well, as I said, I was very careful about what I ever shared, but I made an exception in this case. And I said, well, gentlemen, there is something. I said, I've got an exam tomorrow, and if I don't pass it, I'm out in the cold. I lose my job, and I believe I'm called to be the chaplain. And they, they agreed, oh, oh, yeah, we think you are too. And I said, well, by tomorrow, I've got to be able to take you down. And I'm awful at this. And the inmate leader said, well, he said, then we need to pray about it. And I will never forget the sight of those 10 beefy inmates covered in tattoos, all sitting in a circle, holding each other's hands and holding my hand. And they all bowed their heads. And the inmate leader said, Lord Jesus, please enable Geraldine Buckley, Chaplain Geraldine, to be able to take us down. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know something? The Lord answered their prayers because uh, I squeaked through that exam the next day. But the next time I came to Washington DC to see my brother, I'm afraid I lied again. Because I leapt into his house and I said, Damien, you know that exam? Well, I aced it. In fact, I was so good, they've declared this body to be a lethal weapon in the state of Maryland. <laughs> and payback is going to be very sweet. Be afraid, be very afraid. And I like to think that he was. 